Welcome to the Feudal Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we're going to be talking about Dead Man Wonderland, but we also have a announcement at the end, so stay tuned for that. Um, first of all, I'd like to point out, you lied to me, sir. You lied. You said this was like a deadly Disneyland. And we're thinking it's more of a, a slight exaggeration. <laughs> it, it basically for the one scene that did make sense it was like american <laughs> gladiator all right that's yeah. what it reminded me of at least for that se- that that one game portion now well to me that that's disneyland if you've ever been to disneyland with a bunch of kids around you it, it is gladiator you know? it is it's, yeah. it survival is. of the fittest well being that I've only been a couple of times uh, and I'm still alive. Obviously I am the fittest. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. You, well, you, you'd for sure know if you went here. Yes, most definitely. Now what dead man wonderland is about is basically the main character. Ganta is uh, charged with murdering, not just like, kind of murdering kind of killing not just like oh i accidentally stabbed a couple of people no he is charged with brutal massacre of his entire class like horrifically so graphic blood everywhere like more blood than there should be exactly and the lawyer who's supposed to be protecting him who's supposed to be trying to get him off get him free doesn't do that and in fact you find out that the the lawyer who's supposed to be protecting him is actually making it so that way he goes into jail because he gets infected with this special power. I don't know that he's infected with it so much as it was already present and lying dormant. That said, um, the lawyer was not a lawyer. He was just like, send my guy to jail. He deserves it. He's bad. Yeah, the the guy's name I believe was Wakabayushi. They they just refer to him as the promoter, and at, at almost the entire time, which I think is a lot easier for us to remember who he is at that entire for that moment, you know. So the the promoter he he basically frames Ganta. It makes it so that way he he goes to jail, and he is completely and utterly set up for this too. Now. Where Ganta goes to jail, it's not your normal jail. He's also, what, 14, I think, is what they said? He's a 14-year-old? Yeah, I think he just turned 14. Happy birthday to Ganta. Um, He's going to a private, the first and only private jail called Dead Man Wonderland. A jail for profit. Yes. And they are there in a Disneyland-esque environment. So that part is right. But the prisoners are there are for the amusement. And so they get put through this race. Dog race is what it's called. And because Ganta is going to be in this race, they decide to crank it up to maximum difficulty. And the promoter says it's all acting. So the hundreds <laughs> of thousands, of, thousands of people are there. Thousands of people are there watching everyone and they're like, man, these actors are really great. His head just like flew off. I wonder how they did that with special effects. (laughs) CG. CG in real life. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Yeah. And everyone's clapping and, and you know, the people, you know, the, the venture capitalists, I guess you could say, are are upset. He's like, you just basically did a public massacre and everyone was cheering. What the hell was with that? Well, I mean, you can always spin something in the benefit of whoever is watching, I guess. It's an act. Turns into, no, you're not really seeing someone kill each other. They're, They're just really good. We pay them top dollar to fake it. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. And it, it doesn't it doesn't lose that feeling all the way through where you're just like, man, they're it's like even though they're prisoners, that's kind of a kind of a hard hand they dealt got dealt because they have a collar on their neck. So there's n- like not really traditional jail cells in that sense. And the collar that is around their necks 
there there are cells, but they they can roam free and everything like that. And and what ends up happening is is these callers inject poison in them constantly, and they have to take an antidote in a candy form every seventy two hours, or they die. Yes, not not. Nicely either. They don't just like slowly die peacefully. No, it's like a horrific, painful death for them is what it ends up being. If memory serves, there's not enough candies to go around. No, there is. There's enough candies. It's just whether or not you have the ability to get get the candies. You have to buy them. That's what I mean. Well, not just that you have to compete for them. Well, if you can't win, you don't earn essentially well, yeah so they get what are called uh credit points i think it is or something something like that yeah and every hundred thousand you get a candy and when you first come to the jail when you first get there you're given three three candies i think is what it is and you in that and basically you're given a week just just over a week to say hey you have to earn a hundred thousand points or a hundred thousand cash to buy another candy if you don't oh well and there's not enough games to ensure that everyone has the ability to win yeah and and we don't know if the only way they can get points are through games uh they i'm sure they can get it through other means like if you go over here you do construction if you do this you do that do this or do that you work on this you work over here you'll get points and then you'll be able to buy more candy they never go into details in all the different ways that you're able to get it. True. But you do see one or two people bully their way into getting more candy. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Most most definitely. And a, a candy ridden a person with no candy is kind of a desperate person. Very desperate person. And uh, they do show one person. He's very desperate. Wants a candy. He's, and and they don't what's what's great is they don't quite tell you what the significance of the candy is right off the bat. They give it a couple of episodes. They let it they let it play out for like two episodes, I think it is, and then they tell you what the candy's for. You just first episode is what happens, and then you see episode two, a dude is freaking out, holding someone by the neck with a knife, saying, Give me a candy. Someone just give me a candy. And then you find out, oh, Okay, well, obviously candies are pretty important. I wonder why. <laughs> well, when I first saw it, I thought um, maybe candy was code for a drug of some kind. Maybe he's having super hard withdrawals. Yeah. I mean, technically, yeah, he was having super hard withdrawals, but it was a super hard antidote withdrawals. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. it was a. It, and then. It really tries and escalates beyond that. And and you really, at that point, start learning about Ganta and whoever Shiro is. And they, you don't really go into too much detail about who Shiro is. You just know that she's a girl. She can feel Ganta coming close to her. She knows who Ganta is. You find out pretty quickly she's not an average person, if you can consider her human at all, and she's not a prisoner. Well, I mean, kind of, but not in the sense that everybody else is. She's a prisoner, you find out later, because she's got two personalities, and she was the original experiment that led to the development of using one's blood, one's life source blood as a weapon and it's kind of cool because it's well it's not really cool it's funny you find out that all these badass prisoners up top they ain't shit like they're nothing so the guy you see as a major player in the first few episodes you're like oh my god he's gonna be really bad you're like well he's he's nothing at all he might be a baby in comparison yeah and and uh, that is something that they definitely push towards with the beginning and they uh you find out that there's more than just ganta that can do this that can use the blood do you find out there's this whole jail cell block that's hidden block g yeah so block g and what ends up happening is they all have a very unique power so 
the blood magic, the the blood, whatever, it, whatever it is. Every everyone has their own unique thing. So Ganta's his uh, shooting his blood like a bullet. And then you also, I, I would say, per, I, I wouldn't say throw or uh, shooting. I would say more throwing or projectiling or using his blood as a dangerous explosive that he's able to throw like a grenade. No, not quite. That's someone else's power. The grenade, the explosion one where it floats and then explodes, that's someone else's. His, he holds his hand out and concentrates the blood into the center of his hand and then it, and then it ejects, projects, it shoots, which is the more accurate way because even the, the first guy that he comes across and fights by accident, uh, Saki, uh, Senji, Senji, um, calls his, uh, his power dead shot. Cause it hit him square in the chest. Um, Senji, the guy we just mentioned, his are blades that can come out of his arms or hand. Now, the interesting thing that I liked about, um, Ganta's power is very realistic for what he has. And what I mean by that is he's throwing blood away. Essentially. You only have so much blood. You throw too much away, you lose, you, you pass out. Whereas the dude with the blades, only a certain amount of blood left his body and became those blades. And then he sucks that shit back in. I mean, yeah. I personally think that's dirty as shit. Oh, yeah. But he, he also can extend the blades without using more blood. So he can manipulate the blood that's there. Um, he also yeah. meets someone by the name of of gosh what was her name minasuki yeah mina okay. minasuki is who she who he met and her power her blood power is blood going into her hair and basically becoming whips and that's how her blood is that and that's her power so and she's able to walk around with it, right? Yeah, she's able to walk around with it. It's just her hair just becomes really bloody. And how where she cuts herself for the blood is her ears. And so everyone has their own unique powers. You have someone that's basically defensive. You learn that another person's blood, like we just said, floats around and then explodes. Uh, and, uh, you know, everyone has their own unique personality, too which suits their power. You know, when you, when you think about their personality, how they are, it, it suits their power. And the thing that I find really interesting is the imagination of the wielder of the power dictates its effectiveness. For instance, throwing his blood around seems to work for what? Two or three matches. Yeah. And, Oh, I forgot. These are not only high stake matches, not necessarily to the death, but there's a lot of money involved and your yourself essentially is on the line because the loser loses something personal to the effect of an eyeball, an arm, an organ, some hair, anything. And, and (laughs) the funny thing is just like a game show, you get to spin the wheel to figure out what you're going to lose. Yeah. It's uh they come out with a, basically a slot machine, roll it up. The doctor, you know, pulls the arm and then you sit there and you say when to stop and when, it, where it stops, however it stops, that's what you're losing. So Senji, who was fighting Ganta, uh, he lost. And so as a result of this, he loses his eye. And he just like sits there and, and, you know, they show his eye being pulled out and cut from his socket, from his, from yeah, his skull. If you have any empathy whatsoever, you feel that shit going on and you're like, oh God, no. Yeah. And it's, it's not just like, oh, in, uh, you know, something you can lose without dying. It's like, no, straight up. You, if you roll and it's a heart, you lose your heart. If you roll and it's your brain, it's guess what? Yeah. You, you, it's a total crapshoot. So you can lose a limb like, a uh, uh, Minatsuki. She lost. What did she lose? She lost her, lost one kidney and she lost her stomach. 
Yeah. Why yeah. she's still and alive is another story entirely, but well, she's able the surgeon their the surgeon's goal is to only take what is spun. If something not vital to your life has been spun, that for some reason it, the, the surgeon's able to manipulate the rest of your organs to compensate. That or they put something fake in there, like a uh, one of the guy, uh, like uh, Nagi, the guy who's considered an owl, the one where his blood blood floats around. He lost a couple of times, and one of the times he lost his uh, his voice. He lost the vocal cords. That's one of the things that spun he lost. The only reason why he's able to talk is because he has a fake robotic voice box in there now. True. Now, it can be something as trivial as a haircut, which has happened. Although, uh, they did say when uh, when, uh, Minatsuki ended up getting the hair, they said, hopefully, because they rigged it so that way that the hair would only show up. Uh, And they said, now, hopefully she doesn't get pissed (coughs) off and, and just decide to rip it out by the roots. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the method of extraction is not up to you. It's up to the surgeon. Yeah. So the fact that, let's say, yeah, your hair is chosen. She don't have to cut it. She can pull it out one by one. Yeah. She doesn't or have to be she painless. She can cut your scalp. You know, she can scalp you to get your hair if she wanted to. Yeah. So, so the method of extraction ain't exactly there, but... Yeah, only take what you came for. Mm-hmm. So for a for a twelve episode though, I feel it left a lot to be answered. It it it, yes. it gave you so much information and left you asking so many questions that I f- I feel like there should have been another season at least. I believe this setup was there for it. Um, What I found interesting though, for a 12 episode anime, it was remarkably good at making you compassion. I guess would be a good word for, for each of the characters that they invested time into for the short amount of screen time they actually had, you became invested, which is why you were able to feel empathy for the guy that lost his eye. At least in my personal case, I he he didn't get too much screen time, but you had a feeling that he'd become a mentor, which he does. But when he lost his eye, that was what his third time maybe on screen. And it was hardly any of the times on screen were moments where you would be like, yeah, I, I can I can definitely see this guy being a good guy. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you on that. It, it, they definitely left that. Or, or made you feel the compassion for the people that they definitely wanted you to feel compassion for. It was not done uh, half-assed, like a lot of like a lot of other shows out there. It was definitely not half-assed. Uh, That's one of the reasons why I thought it was going to get a second season, because you don't typically put that kind of production in writing. You don't. It's not normal. No, it it is not normal at all. It is definitely. It definitely left room for a for a sequel to appear. Now, granted, there is the manga, and you can go read the manga um, if you want. If that is something that you want to do. Also, there was an OVA as well, and the OVA actually centers around Senji and his life. I- before he went to jail. Oh, that's right. I thought you meant OVA like a, like a 13th episode. No. Yeah. Um, and you can see that he's not a bad guy. He got a rough shot just like Ganta. Same, same guy. He was like, I, I'm not going to say the start, but he was one of the people that started dead man wonderland. Well, he was one of the people that probably originally got sent there because you learned during the OVA that he was a part of the police force while it was being built. Interesting thing. In case you never noticed the ending credits, the images were Mm -hmm. of, were of all the main characters and the supporting characters like Sanji, Shiro, Ganta, all of the, all of them. 
before the incident happened. No joke. I did not know that. Yeah. So you see Ganta and Shiro together as kids. You see Sanji in his police uniform. You see Minatsuki and her brother, Yu, uh, together with uh, their mom. So you see all that information, all that stuff before, you know, the, the event, the catastrophic event that happened. And it's all place all at the end of the each episode in pictures. Hmm. I never made a connection. I just thought that, you know, it was not necessarily earlier life, but like what life should have been or could have been had they not become infected. Nope. It was before they became infected. That's kind of cool. And it's that kind of production value. It's, it's, it's that kind of extras that made this, this anime stand out. In my opinion, it was quite possibly one of your best choices. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I, I, and the animation quality itself was was consistent. I'm not going to say it was great, but it was consistent. It was. It was very consistent. Um, you do. You're also kind of led to the fact that uh, Shiro was the reason why Ganta gained this uh, blood power or this uh, ah, that's what they call it. They call it a sin the sin power yeah. and you're led to believe through some actions and some other scenes that she is the one that murdered everyone in the classroom, Gonta's classroom and that she you're not led to believe it's straight shown. Well, they don't show her face and they show the mask, her grabbing the mask and wearing the thing, but you don't, they, they never outright say that that's what it is. I mean, you're not wrong there, but so you you could I definitely do. you could definitely say yeah it, it is shown it is definitely strongly insinuated and I would agree with you yeah she is the one that did it but I would not be surprised if it was someone else because she's not the only one I would not be surprised if there was someone else that was similar to her that did this and the only reason why I say that is because of how open the ending was I, okay I can see that but my counter to that would be that you not only see everyone have a different ability, I don't think that anybody was even in the same category of ability. Like, they were all distinct in their own right. Right. Like, no one else had exploding blood. No one else could use blades in any fashion, I don't, I don't think. No one else could use a whip. Um, he was but, the only one with a gun. But we don't know that. I mean, like, everyone may, else... Okay. I mean, I could... I could see you using the excuse that they're on a path to the final destination. The final destination is that girl. I forget what her name was. Shiro. Shiro. Yeah. The final destination is to Shiro and who's basically <laughs> the avatar of that, of that thing using all the elements and stuff like that, or all the abilities. But to counter that, that old man who was, I wouldn't, I want to say like a chairman, if you will, of the entire place, the, the guy who, who, the director, yeah. He had some pretty awesome abilities himself. Yeah. And he, he trained, what's your name? Shiro. Shiro. He but, trained Shiro. But he didn't, he didn't never, they never said that they trained. They just fought. Yeah, they just fought. And he, he just got up and they started fighting for whatever reason. And then at the end, he's still talking to her at the end of the fight. You don't see the fight, whole fight. You just know that there's a big, massive fight between them. And then you see a small glimpse of it. And then she's sitting there and she's talking to his head, which is on the ground. And his head still talks for a few more minutes. Hour of the blood compels you. Yeah. I'm um. Kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's. It, it was a great show. It was a great show despite the open ending as how crazy open it was. It definitely pushed like, hey, you know, uh, we're, there might be a season two. Maybe. Possibly. Yeah. They did not. They definitely did not push as hard as they did the last episode we talked about. The asterisk war. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Geez. We've got another thing coming. Well, no, they, they never said they got another thing coming. The, the most that they might have said was, I wonder if he's going to do anything in the future. Yeah. Like that, that, was, that, that was the absolute most. Now, I'd like to backtrack just a little bit to talk about the powers that were developed and abilities. 
We already covered that. So, well, no, not 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 the upgraded ones. We talked about how he threw blood at people in the dead shot, but we never talked about how he improved it because he hit a wall. Oh, right. So he learned by going smaller and concentrating the amount of blood or using a smaller amount of blood, he's able to shoot it at a higher velocity, increasing the power and, and uh, strength that's behind it. Yep. Subsonic almost. Yeah. And, or supersonic almost. And you learn this um, because his good old buddy with the blades was like, hey, Sinji, he's like, hey, why aren't you doing something like this? You know, your blood is more powerful than you know. Or he says, your blood is more powerful than you know. And your limit is your own imagination. Check this out. And he goes, supersonic blade and just demolishes everyone. And it's basically just him making his blade longer and shorter in the blink of an eye. Well, not only that, he does it through his uh, fist, too. So instead of it going through his arms, he's doing it through his fist and basically pulls it out like a samurai sword to give it that extra speed boost. And he does it because he said uh, because of the group that they were fighting were supposed to be there to be able to quell the, the sins, so to speak. And he goes, I thought you guys would be stronger. And so he's able to kill them because they're able to stop the blood through uh, their technologies. So that way they have a way to be able to fight and defeat, defend against the sins, defend against the blood. Kind of like riot police. Yeah. With an upper hand. Exactly. So like the, uh, the armor they wore, it, it reacts to the blood and makes it basically just not, not good enough. And it, when it turns Sanji it into does it, normal thing, blood is yeah, what it turns it into normal blood. What his name is Sanji? Yeah, uh, Sanji. S E N G S E N J I. I don't know why I think Sanji from One Piece, but yeah. Sanji. Um, he made his blood go so fast that even though it turned into normal blood, the the velocity that it carried did enough damage to where it was a, unstoppable, essentially. It sliced and that's everyone when, in half. Yeah, and that's when. Ganta looked and said, how'd you do that? And he explained only a little bit and said, you got to figure the rest out on your own punk. Yeah. And after damn near passing out in his training montage, he, he, he starts running out of blood because he's taking that big glob and he's trying to shoot it and he's running out of blood, which is why the amount gets smaller and smaller until he has a, a literal drop. And when he fires that one, it, it just shatters of the wall he's training against. And that's where he's like, oh, I don't have to pass out every fight. Yeah. <laughs> Granted, he learns that like the last episode, like the last two episodes. Yeah. So yeah. but when he does learn it, he's kind of awesome. Well, so, I mean, eh. hashtag season two. Hashtag I'm season two. Never. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. So. Season two is never going to happen. You and I both know this. Yeah, I know. All right. So I think this is a good spot on a scale of zero to five, sir. How would you rate this? This one's a solid 4.7. Really? The highest I've done yet, I think. Only because the story, the story makes, and the story makes the show. A good story can have crap follow it. But if the story, I'll still watch it. All right. All right. Let's see your hard ass. I got to go with a. I got to go with a 3.1. Ah, uh, you know, you, 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 you've just committed a crime. I'm sentencing you to dead man wonderland. <laughs> uh, the reason why I give it a 3.1. It is a great show. It is a wonderful show. It is an awesome show. I think it is a, a beautifully done show, except, except for how open the ending was. And so you can't knock open. Off. I can't, you I can't, can't stand endings so like much. that. I can't stand endings like that. It was just so open. <sighs> and they left so many questions unanswered. It was ridiculous. And then what the heck was with yeah. the reason for the OVA? There was like, it was great. It was wonderful. Show empathy. To, to but show. it was pointless, well, okay, the, and it should have gone OVA, into more detail. Not backtrack. It should have gone forward. Should have answered some <laughs> questions. Not gave me more. <laughs> well, see, no, I think 
answered enough in the OVA. I think the OVA was not to show personal growth or whatever the hell it was trying to. I think the OVA was trying to show the origination of the of the uh, the infection or the illness or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it didn't Where show the origination of nothing. It just showed the dude before he got sent to jail. That was it. That's all it did. Senji was a cop. Showed his life as a cop for a couple of days before he went to jail. That's all it did. Oh. Well, he didn't have the power before, did he? Well, you know what? I never had the power of Grayskull, so... <laughs> Is that why you're working on your six-pack, sir? Exactly. <laughs> the power of Grayskull. All right. So, I believe uh that next week is your choice it is so uh my choice is going to be no game no life shocker it is i know it's an anime i have seen before obviously it is an anime i thoroughly enjoy Um, i I think you've almost mentioned no game no life out of every (laughs) every every podcast episode we've done out of all of them i think you've mentioned it referenced it or something like that at least once every single time i hope i hope watching it a fifth time all the way through which is i think what this is going to be for me uh, it stands up. I, I the past four times it looked pretty good to me. I, I just I want you, you to know. I just yeah. want you to know. You set the bar so high. If it doesn't blow my socks off, all right. Oh God. Well, see, the problem is you don't wear socks. That's not the point. So you're gonna have to wear socks for this one. I, I will. <laughs> I will put on socks just for this one. All right. If it doesn't okay. blow my socks off, I'm gonna be disappointed. It is a 12 episode uh, sent to another world anime. Um, Amazing graphics. What I will say is it deserves another one. If you don't like this one, you're probably not going to like the one we're about to watch. Okay. Yeah. Uh, What is it needs a second episode or it needs a second season. Gotcha. What are the, what are the genres? Um, I don't honestly know. I would say fantasy more often than not. Okay. Um, it's not Eche, e- e- Ichi. It's not... Uh, actually, let me look it up. Are you looking it up? I am. And the genre it is listed as is... Fantasy. Fantasy. Lo and behold, that's it. Well, actually, game, adventure, comedy, supernatural, fantasy, and etchy. You lie. I am serious as a heart attack. Oh God, it is. So, okay, no, no, I have, I have isekai, fantasy, and science fiction. Those are the ones I have for the genre. Yeah. Well, we have uh, yet to see if it is another etchy one. I mean, like so far, you're batting two for two out of etchy. So. We'll uh, go ahead and continue on with that. And uh, as for the announcement, this is. The last episode as Feudal Anime Podcast, starting next episode, that's right, with the fabled No Game, No Life that Rick constantly talks about, we will be (laughs) now featured anime podcast. Uh, The reason why we decided to go with this name change is because uh, we feel that it is uh, better encompassing as to what we actually are doing, giving you a weekly featured anime. What we like, what hopefully you'll like. Yeah, and uh, you know, and with that, uh, feel free to reach out to us. You can reach out to us at Feudal Anime Pod at on the Twitterverse, and you can also email us at Feudal Anime Podcast at gmail dot com. Although that will all soon be changing to Featured Anime for everything that I possibly can, and uh, I will do my best to upgrade all the past emails in the previous episodes as well to. Uh, Make it so that way you guys can reach out to us no matter what. Until next time, I'm Jack. And I'm Rick. Later. Later.